Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today on the channel, we're talking all about home fortifications because guys, I have a sneaking suspicion that when it all goes down, barbarian hordes are gonna be beating down your door trying to take every single thing you have. That is why you absolutely must consider, oh, sandbags, baby. And you must consider getting a whole lot of them. Today on the channel, we're gonna talk about various uses for sandbags in emergency situations. Let's get to it. Take that, communist. <laughs> All right guys, so there's many uses for sandbags. The most common use that most people probably are familiar with is using them as flood barriers. Everybody should have sandbags in their preparedness kit. They just have a variety of different uses from various different types of terraforming. People even build houses out of them, believe it or not. What we're gonna be talking about today is for the purpose of fortification. There is one other use of sandbags and that is for the purpose of building a nuclear fallout shelter. Three feet of earth is what is required in order to attenuate gamma radiation. So for that reason alone, every prepper should have a few hundred sandbags at their disposal. A wall like this, which consists of some drywall, maybe some particle board, maybe some vinyl siding, maybe if you're lucky, some stone veneer on the outside is gonna offer little to no ballistic protection whatsoever. There's a scene in the movie, The Book of Eli, where these cannibals are holed up in this house and they're trying to fight off this band of marauders who are firing all manner of caliber of bullet into their home, including a Gatlin gun. Now the movie portrays this type of scenario semi-realistically in that a lot of the bullets go through, but of course the protagonist never dies. I do think they do a good job in showing just how much bullets will chew up a house like that. Those walls offer very little to no protection whatsoever. Now there are a variety of other household items such as books, water even to some degree. We've done videos on snow, how snow will offer some ballistic protection, surprising amounts with just a few feet of snow. So there's a variety of other things, but the great thing about sandbags is that it's ubiquitous, it's modular, and they are cheap. Okay, so we're gonna head on out to my friend Dean's at Arcopia, and we are going to shoot up some stuff. So lots of different ways we could do uh, forward fighting positions or defensive fighting positions besides sandbags, but you could get some wire fence, put it in a circle, which would be very strengthening, fill it with rocks, nothing's getting through that. Cinder blocks, I'd say wouldn't be too good because a couple hits and these are gonna blow apart and there'll be nothing left. This I use for uh, storing my firewood. This is kind of like a portable gabion too, but you could fill this full of larger rocks too and have a portable gabion. With a tractor or a skid steer, you could quickly deploy them wherever you wanna do that, right? Yeah. This is like a giant sandbag. This is a mini bulk feed bag. So in here, what do I have? Feed oats for my animals. And same concept as the sandbag system. If you hit that, all that friction, even though it's just oats instead of sand, it's gonna stop anything, I would say. And then fill back in. And then your, your sandbags that the whole video is about, but this is, they're meant to stack them like bricks, right? Yeah. Like that, and you could go this high. And again, whatever, it's a lot of friction, that's gonna stop anything. The sand's gonna close in, and this is like your easiest, best option, I would say. These are, you have laying around the farm, these are easy to deploy too, right? So if you got a machine, you could pile these up and that could be a defensive position too. And then these guys too, I don't know how good they do for uh, high caliber ammunition, but just like sandbags, you could stack these like bricks, right? This is just stuff you have lying around. Another thing, if you have dirt up, like behind us, a pile of any sort of material is about the best you can get. That's a uh, good artillery for protection. Then. Yeah, that's, that's what backstop is for any range, right? Ready? Yeah, it definitely did not come out the other side. <laughs> yeah, it did destroy the bag. You know, there's a little bit of sand pouring out. So let's try a higher caliber, shall we? Well, that's 
go see. No penetration with the 22 or the 223 round full metal jacket. We're gonna try the SKS. So let's give that one a shot. That definitely uh, did a bit more damage. The mighty SKS, as you can see, was able to get a lot more penetration. And as you can see, the sand is now spilling out of the bag. So eventually that would likely be a problem, I would presume. I want to blow this thing up, damn it. Put a picture of the communist cameraman on there. <laughs> All right, let's try a higher caliber. We're going to try, uh, try the 308. Oh, that doesn't feel nice on the shoulder. I've never shot a 50 cal, but I imagine it's not fun. Let's try one more. Yeah, this is doing nothing. <laughs> Hopefully the 12 gauge will open it up. Let's do double odd buckshot, why not? All right, so this gun, just like so. Yep. <laughs> Let's go check that out. In terms of sandbags, that's a quick way to empty a sandbag. We still have no penetration on the other side, but when you have that spread, it just opens it right up. Mind you, we didn't start on a blank canvas. We're gonna try some number four bird shot. This is gonna spread a lot, so I think this actually might be ideal. Too many guns, not enough time. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that worked. So a lot of little BBs is better than a big BB when it comes to disabling the defenses. All right, well, let's try the slugs before we totally destroy all our sandbags. All right, bitch. I think that did it. Did not make it through. That damn sandbag, I tell ya. See if I can find the bullet in there. There it is. It's not much to it. These are lightweight slugs, so... Did not go far at all. Woohoo! That's what I like to see. It's like that old saying, you gotta be be ready to bend. Don't be too rigid or else you'll just fall to pieces. Well, I think we've proven that cinder blocks aren't that good. What else should we try? A piece of wood? Yeah! <laughs> well, it did make it through though. So, yeah, yet again, four inches of wood stopped the bullet, so it's pretty cool. For this experiment, we're gonna uh, test out hay bales. I'm thinking that went through. Did it land in the bucket? <whistles> okay, so, <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> One hay bale did not do it. So let's try two bit hay bales, see what happens. I wonder if we went lengthwise, if we'd have better luck. I would say so. Let's try that. Here, we'll, Oops. we're gonna stack them. Okay. Well, that kind of sucks. I had my hopes up for that. It not only went, it went through both sides plus the hay bale. I mean, the only other thing to try would be two, but I wonder if there's even any point at this point, like. Yep. Ah, it's all right, I, I don't want you. Nice. Go check it out. Ladies, I'm 6'2". Just kidding. This is how much straw you need to protect you from a large caliber bullet. Go check out our Copious channel. He's got a lot of cool stuff. He's building out a apocalypse survival homestead here. He doesn't call it that, but that's what it is. Cause he's a modest guy, but he, this guy's gonna survive the apocalypse. 
I'll be there in the back 40 somewhere with my one of my tents. We'll see, but yeah, thanks for having us out here. Absolutely, it's, it's man. It's been a blast, literally. Today on the channel, we're building sand castles made out of sandbags. All right, let's get to it. So there are plenty of other ways you can fortify your home besides just using sandbags. Sandbags, however, are simply the best. Now, the military uses things called HESCO barriers. Basically, what these are are much larger sandbags that they, of course, can fill with the heavy equipment they have at their disposal. Nothing is going to beat a trench because that's basically an infinite amount of sand protecting you from various projectiles. So there's a few different types of sandbags. One is burlap that we don't show here. The reason why I would advise against burlap is that they are biodegradable. They're mostly used for situations where they wanna minimize the amount of cleanup after a flooding event. So they're more expensive and they're less durable because they're biodegradable. For preppers, if you're using this for fortifications, you obviously want that fortification to last as long as possible. So you would go with some kind of polypropylene. We do have the thinner polypropylene bags. Some people are gonna want the heavy duty. So these black ones are actually more heavy duty sandbag polypropylene material, just a heavier gauge. They will last probably 18 months or so in direct sunlight. Whereas this thinner gauge polypropylene in direct sunlight might only last about six months before it starts to disintegrate and lose its strength. Now there's also the bags that they make earth homes out of, as they're called. Those are tubular designs and I think it might require some machinery in order to fill those. People build homes out of them. Yes, those would be absolutely bulletproof. It doesn't take a whole lot of sand to stop even the largest caliber bullet. Ideally, you want sand that is dry and very fine granules that can be compacted. If the sand is too dry, the sand is going to pour out and it's gonna be quickly depleted. Now that's great for a limited exchange of gunfire, but if you want something that's gonna to hold together long-term, you might want that sand to be a little bit damp in order to retain its form even after it's been shot. When a bullet goes into the sandbag, the tunnel that it creates is gonna immediately collapse. That means that if another bullet was coming right behind the first bullet, that it's going to have to penetrate the same amount of sand. However, if that sand is moist and it retains that tunnel and the tunnel doesn't collapse, you do run the risk of entering the same tunnel of the previous bullet and potentially penetrating the sandbag barrier. So how we've set up our sandbag fort here is not necessarily ideal. This is more of a display. What you ideally wanna do in the military, they stack them three deep. And the reason why they do that is they wanna stagger it because the weak points in this set up here is going to be the gaps between the sandbags. While there is still contact between the sandbags and probably enough to stop a bullet, uh, that is gonna be the weakest point. And of course, there's gonna be complete gaps where you, know, you can see light coming through. That's not gonna be good either. What you're seeing here is there's a lot of gaps in here. That's because we had a limited amount of sandbags to build the project. Ideally, you would only fill your sandbags half full. That way they're not as tubular. And so they're gonna make more flat contact a more tubular or cylindrical sandbag is going to have less points of contact with the sandbag beneath it but if it's flatter and only half full you're going to use more sandbags but you're going to have more ballistic protection in those gaps all right so this is what i'm talking about these kind of gaps the only way to really prevent this is to make three layers 
to ensure that you have your sandbag staggered enough so that there's no potential points of ingress. And what I've done here is I've just stood sandbags up. Uh, this is going to put more stress on the sandbag to place them like this. But if you had a limited amount of sandbags, you would lay these ones lengthwise like that. And then you would stand up <coughs> some sandbags like that. There's a variety of ways you can do this. To be on the safe side, you probably want at least 12 inches of sand uh, because you want to have that redundancy because understand that all it takes is a bit of buckshot into one of these sandbags and all that sand is gonna rush out of there and there's no more ballistic protection whatsoever. So to build a fort like this, a sandbag fort, you're probably looking at 100 to 200 sandbags. Ideally, I would say having about 500 to 1,000 of these things at your disposal would not be a bad idea, especially if you're talking about reinforcing a basement to use as a fallout shelter or for the purpose of, heaven forbid, home fortifications. It's very counterintuitive what will offer ballistic resistance and what won't, so I'd encourage you to do more research. Don't rely solely on the information we're providing you today for your own personal safety. Please go and do a little bit more research, but based on our tests, a bullet wasn't even get able to get through the sandbag on its smallest dimension. You can go and get some of these at canadianpreparedness.com. You can get the cheaper, lightweight versions, or you can get the more expensive, heavy-duty versions that are gonna last longer outside. Check out the coupon code in the description below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at canadianpreparedness.com, where you'll find high-quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk, and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.